before I begin my demonstration, I'm going to play a short song for you guys. So. Sorry, everyone can see that my guitar isn't tuned properly, which is the focus of my demonstration today. So, some people may think that a guitar is one of the easiest instruments to pick up and play, but it, always, it isn't the easiest instrument to tune. So, nowadays we have forms of technology like electronic tuners that can properly tune the guitar for you. But as most of us know, technology isn't always reliable, and sometimes it's good to do things the old-fashioned way. So, for my tuning, guitar tuning demonstration, I'm going to go over two things. The basic parts of a guitar, and then using those parts to properly tune a guitar. So to start off, is a breakdown of the guitar parts. So this part here is called the body, and attached to that is the neck or the fingerboard, and on top here is the head. And this hollow circle in the middle is called the sound hole, which is how the guitar produces the sound. Now there are six strings on a guitar that stretch from the bridge over the sound hole, across the fingerboard, and then they attach to individual pegs on the head called tuning keys. Now the strings are arranged from right to left, from the highest pitch to the lowest pitch. So this would be string one, two, three, four, five, and six. And now the last part of a guitar, but is also important in the tuning process, are these metal dividers that split the fingerboard into sections called frets. And these are numbered from top to bottom. So fret one, fret two, fret three, and so on. So if you hold down on a fret on any given string, it'll change the pitch of that string. So if I play an open string six and hold down the fret here, string six makes a completely new pitch. And I want to call close attention to two frets in particular, which is fret five, which is indicated by this white circle, and fret four, which is directly above fret five. So now that I've gone over the basic parts of the guitar, I'm going to explain the process of tuning the guitar using these parts. So this process is also called relative tuning because you are tuning the strings relative to one another. So the strings are tuned in reverse order, starting with string six. And one assumption to make is that string six is correctly tuned to its correct pitch. So to tune string five, you would hold down the fifth fret of string six, and that creates the pitch that fret five needs to sound like. So you play both strings, and then you adjust the tuning key for string five. So turning the tuning key counterclockwise uh, turns or tightens the string, which raises the pitch. Turning it clockwise lowers. So you adjust accordingly until it matches that pitch. And you repeat that process for string four by holding down the fifth fret of string five. And for string three by holding down the fifth fret of string four. The only difference is in tuning string two. In this case, you're holding down the fourth fret of string three. Again, you turn the tuning key accordingly to match that pitch. And then you go back to normal for string one. And to tune string one, you hold down the fifth fret of string two. And then turn the tuning key for string one accordingly. parts of the guitar and how all of these parts work together to tune the guitar. So this tuning process and learning how to do this can make or break a guitar performance. So it's very important that guitarists learn this technique in the event that they need to tune their guitar. So before any of you go over to the Brownstones Lounge and book your first gig, or if any of you guys out there want to impress the girl across from your dorm with a passionate rendition of one of Taylor Swift's mind-numbing songs, which is, well, I can't play it now, but it's very important that you make sure your guitar is up to par. So, just like
like the saying, you can tune a guitar, or you can't tune a fish. <laughs> <laughs>